Goods and Services Tax, also known as GST, is a comprehensive indirect tax levied on the supply of goods and services across India. It has replaced multiple indirect taxes that were previously levied by both central and state governments, including value-added tax, which is called VAT, service tax, central excise duty and many others. Implemented on 1st July year 2017, GST aims to create one single unified market, thus simplifying the tax structure, reducing the cascading effect of taxes and making the Indian economy more robust and competitive. Well, it has become a part of our daily life. Whenever we go out or buy something, GST is applied. Recently, the 53rd meeting of the GST Council was held on 22nd of June 2024 and the major changes were brought in. Hi, I'm your host Ria and today in this video, we will understand about those major changes that have been made in this meeting. But before that, make sure you have subscribed to our channel Freedom Money English and download the Freedom app. Let's first understand how does GST work. GST is structured as a destination-based multi-stage tax that is levied at each point of sale. The tax is collected at every stage of the production process but is refunded to all the parties in the supply chain other than the final consumer. The mechanism ensures that the end consumer bears the GST charged by the dealer in the supply chain. Now let's talk about the three components of GST. First, Central GST, also known as CGST, levied by the central government on intrastate supplies. Second, State GST, known as SGST, levied by the state government on the intrastate supplies. And third, Integrated GST, also known as IGST, levied by the central government on interstate supplies and imports. When GST came into effect, a council called GST Council was established consisting of the Union Finance Minister and the representative from all the states and union territories to make decisions on the various aspects of GST including tax rates, exemptions and administrative procedures. Well, as the name suggests, GST Council is a constitutional body, meaning it is mentioned in our constitution. The GST Council is headed by the finance minister of the country, which is currently Nirmala Sitaraman. Additionally, all the finance ministers of the states are included in this council. The secretariat office of the GST Council is in New Delhi and the Revenue Secretary becomes the Secretary of the GST Council as well. Now, a question might arise in your mind. The decisions taken by the GST Council, are they mandatory for the states and the central government to follow? Look, this matter went to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court said that no, the GST Council is a recommendatory body. It only makes recommendations and it is up to the state whether they want to follow them or not. But since the decisions are made collectively by all the states and the central government, it is natural that the most of the recommendations are implemented by the states. So even though it is called a recommendatory body, we all know the most of the decisions are implemented. Now the next question is how are decision made in the GST council how are meetings conducted and who has how much power i must tell you that the GST council must have at least 50% of its members present for example if there are 30 members in the council the meeting can only proceed if at least 15 members are present secondly decision in the GST council are taken by a 3/4 majority meaning 75% voting is required now let's talk about the most important point of this video about the 53rd gst council meeting and its takeaways the 53rd gst council meeting was held in new delhi on 22nd of june in this meeting finance minister nirmala sitaraman said that the several decisions were taken to increase trade and reduce the compliance burden meaning to provide some relief to the taxpayers the first change is on aircraft parts and tools which will now have uniform 5% IGST. There is a reduction as there were different rates earlier. The second change is on milk can. 
there was a confusion regarding GST on milk can made up of aluminium, iron and any other material. Now, there will be a uniform 12% GST applied to all the types of milk can. Similarly, card boxes which used to have an 18% GST will now have a reduced 12% GST. Solar cookers, whether single or dual energy source, will now have a uniform 12% GST charged. Poultry machinery parts will also have a 12% GST charge. Sprinklers, whether fire, water sprinklers or any other type will have a 12% GST. Next, several goods have been exempted from GST, meaning 0% GST will be applied on these goods. For instance, defence import will be exempted from GST until 2029. Additionally, research equipments import or research and development will be exempted from the GST. SEZ imports, where goods are imported into special economic zones for export purposes, will be now exempted from the CES. Various services will also be exempted from GST such as platform tickets, retiring rooms and clock rooms at the Indian railway stations. Renting of PGs and hostels will be exempted from GST if the monthly rent is up to 20,000 and the stay is there for at least 90 days. Indian railway maintenance service will also be exempted from GST. The GST Council has taken several important decisions such as interest and penalty waivers for certain periods if GST is paid. The appeal process in GST has been streamlined, requiring a very minimum case amount for appeals at different levels. For example, an appeal to the GST Appellate Tribunal can be made only if the case is worth at least 50 lakhs. Biometric authentication will be implemented for GST registration to prevent fraud. Fertilizers have been discussed and efforts are being made to further reduce GST on them. Well, in conclusion, it would be right to say that these changes are expected to have a positive implication for the economy, businesses and consumers contributing to the economic growth, improved ease of doing business and increased transparency. However, the government must address the challenges and concern associated with the implementation of these changes to ensure their success. Continuous monitoring, rubber support mechanism and proactive measures will be crucial in realizing the full potential of the reform introduced in the 53rd GST Council meeting. Well, that's all in today's video. We'll see you in the next video very soon. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you share this with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel Freedom Money English and download the Freedom app. This is your host Ria. Take care. Bye-bye.